suppose that the cotangent of alpha equals negative one-third and alpha is in quadrant two. We want to find the sine of alpha and the cosine of alpha. Now quadrant two, why is that important? Well remember in quadrant two we know that the sine function is going to be positive and we also know that the cosine is negative. And so that's going to be very important when we're actually getting our answers. So I need to get, figure out how can I get sine and cosine if I have cotangent. So what I'm going to need to do is find an equation, an identity that I know. So I know that the cosecant squared of x equals 1 plus the cotangent squared of x. Now, if I just had the cosecant of x, I could write that in time terms of sine. But I don't, so how am I going to get that? Well, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of the left side, I'm just going to get the cosecant of x equals, and I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cotangent squared of x. Okay, so now what? Well, I said that this is something with sine. Well, I know that the cosecant of x is the same thing as 1 over the sine of x, and that is still going to have the same thing on the right-hand side, so plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cotangent squared of x. Yeah, we're doing pretty good, right? Now I need to solve for sine of x. So that's going to give me the sine of x is going to equal plus or minus 1 over over that big square root. So the square root of 1 plus the cotangent squared of x. Oh, that's a lot, right? So what am I going to do with that? Well, I have my cotangent value, so I can actually figure that out right here. And that's going to be the sine of x is going to equal to, now, what did we say about sine? Over here in the upper right-hand corner, we said it's going to be positive. So we don't even care about the negative that we said that when we took the square root. We just want the positive. So we're going to do 1 over, and I'm going to have the square root of, well, I have 1 plus, now what did I say cotangent squared? They told us that that was minus 1 third, and then I'm going to square that term. So when I do all the math, I notice it comes out with 3 over the square root of 10. Well, once I get that, what am I going to do? Well, I can't leave the square root of 10 in the denominator, so I'm going to need to rationalize the denominator. And so when I do that, I get 3 square root of 10 over 10. Now, you may be asking yourself, how in the world did she get that 3 on top? And what happens is when you simplify this, you're going to get 1 over the square root of 10 over 9. So that's where that came from. So I have found the sine of alpha. Well, I still need the cosine. So do we have a rule that says anything about cosine? Well, we do. And if you remember, we know that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals 1. So that means that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. Well, that's pretty cool, right? But what if I need just cosine? I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides, so I'm going to get the cosine of x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared x. That doesn't look too bad, right? Now, or do we need the plus or do we need the minus? Again, we look up here in the upper right-hand corner. It says that cosine is going to be negative. So I know that cosine of x is actually going to equal a negative. And now I can plug in what I know. And I know that I'm going to have 1 minus, I found sine, to be 3 square root of 10 over 10. So I'm going to square that. Now I need to simplify this. And when I simplify it, you'll notice that you're going to get minus the square root of 10 over 100, which is going to reduce to the negative square root of 10 over 10. So then there's your value for cosine of alpha.